Welcome to the Kim Commando Today podcast. This is a replay from earlier this year. Hey, it's Kim Commando Today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. I always like to begin with something interesting for you guys and gals. Now, the official trailer about the true story of BlackBerry was just released. And they say it's the first film to cover the rise and fall of the world's first smartphone that was worth $70 billion at its peak. I had no idea. Uh, The movie comes out in May. But I have to tell you, I was really never a BlackBerry fan. But certainly at that time, boy, there were some true diehard fans who loved and they still miss having that physical keyboard on a phone. They really, really wanted that. Uh, But speaking of BlackBerry, here's a joke that you can tell the kids. You ready? Uh, What do you get when you eat a BlackBerry? What do you get when you eat a BlackBerry? Are you ready for it? Bluetooth. (laughs) Yes, I know. Hey, welcome to the nation's largest, most trusted show about all things digital. I'm, of course, Kim Commando with you once again, America's beloved digital goddess. And you can find my award-winning show on over 425 top radio stations across the United States. And we're streaming in your favorite radio app. Just search for my last name, Commando. And you can find us as a podcast, webcast, on demand 24-7 with three months worth of rock cards over at getkim.com. And it's a free 30-day trial, by the way, and after that's just a few bucks a month. But we do offer discounts for seniors, service personnel, active military, vets, teachers, really just about anybody, I'll tell you that. Uh, Learn more over at GetKim.com. And a big special hello goes out to all of our listeners in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and Space Force who are listening right now on the American Forces Network Radio, serving more than 375,000 American servicemen and women in 175 different countries. And you're about ready to get more tech smarts because everything's digital. And if you're a regular listener, I'm so glad that you're here. And if you're a new listener, hey, welcome. We're so glad that you found us. And I'm sure that you have a few questions about something digital I can lend a hand to. And our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 52, 54 is the way to join us. And just a quick reminder, you can always, always, always drop me your questions on the website. I read every single one. That's commando.com. And in the right-hand corner, there's a link that says email Kim. All right. Every single day, I go all over the web and I talk to industry insiders to make sure that I'm up to date about all things digital so that this way you're up to date about all things digital. And you can sound like a tech wizard, even if you're not one. And this is part of the show where I like to focus on the numbers. And we're going to start with our first story of five, and it's a big number, 600 million. 600 million is the headline. Well, it's a $600 million class action lawsuit settlement that I bet you you can be a part of. And you don't even have to prove that you're a part of it. Because if you had a big clunky box talking about a TV in the 1990s, you are entitled to a slice of this pie. Now, before you start thinking about, oh, health risks, safety risks, maybe that's how so-and-so got cancer. No, it's all about price fixing. Uh, Companies like Mitsubishi, Philips, Panasonic, Toshiba, they all got in the action and they made customers pay more for their TVs and monitors. So who can cash in on this? Pretty much anyone who bought one of these TVs from a retail outlet, maybe Best Buy or Costco, you don't have to prove that you purchased one either. So you might be wondering like, oh, am I going to get rich? Can I go to Hawaii on a big vacation on this? Um, No, it's a class action lawsuit. You know, you're never going to make a lot of money, but you're going to get at least 10 bucks per TV, $10 per TV. So it's not a fortune. Maybe you can go to Starbucks. Uh, if you want to know more about this, we have links and some more news about it over at commando.com. And so, again, it's the $600 million class action lawsuits. Wow. Old TVs. Who knew? Uh, next on our list, number two, I want you to watch out for dark patterns. The FTC just came down hard on Epic Games, the makers of, of course, Fortnite. They're slapping Epic with a $245 million fine for tricking players and to making unwanted purchases. Yeah. According to the FTC, they used what's called dark patterns. A lot of companies do this. They they dupe us into spending money on in-game purchases. So that means like your kid hits a button that looks like it closes the screen, but instead makes a purchase. It's sneaky and it's scammy and slimy. 
So basically, Epic is using shady tactics to squeeze as much money as possible out of players. That's not the first time that they got caught. A few months ago, they had to pay $275 million for violating children's privacy laws. Now, if you're a parent and you were ticked off at your kid because they made these purchases, what you can do is get a hold of Epic's customer support department and say, you know what? You did this to my kid because of dark patterns, maybe yourself. And I know about the FTC lawsuit, and I want you to refund my money. Yes, that's what you can do. I'll tell you, Fortnite. It's just a crazy game. So many people are playing it for so long. Uh, Next on our list, number three, I just don't get it. More about gaming. We're going to go to China, where this past week, uh, the video game Counter-Strike, someone there paid $160,000 real dollars, to get a digital skin on their AK-47. Yes. Somebody spent $160,000 to buy a digital outfit for their video game gun. Not physical. It's just digital. Uh, The skin is called the White Lotus. It's flowery designs and stickers. Uh, And a lot of Counter-Strike players say, yeah, I think that it's actually worth that kind of money. There are other players who even spent more than this. In the game Entropia Universe, which I've never heard of, uh, someone stole a digital space station for $330,000, a nightclub. This is a virtual nightclub in a video game for $635,000, and a planet. Oh, gosh, for six million bucks, a virtual planet? Are you kidding me? This is virtual goods being paid with real honest goodness money. I just don't get it. Next on our list is number four. Before you check out, I want you to wash the floors. Uh, Airbnb, they say, we want you to do a little bit more cleanup, not just taking out the trash or uh, maybe changing the sheets or changing the towels, washing the towels, whatever it may be. Some people are paying up to $375 in cleanup fees, and they still have to do the housework. Hmm. Folks on social media are all over complaining about this. One guest said that an Airbnb host asked them to mow the lawn before they left. That's what's fun, isn't it? Others have been told to clean the microwave, vacuum, maybe feed the animals on the property, and it hasn't stopped people from loving Airbnb. A recent study from Morning Consult showed that Airbnb consumer favorability was slightly higher than it was in 2021. They turned a profit of, get this, $1.9 billion last year. Wow, what a phenomenal success story. I love entrepreneurs, don't you? Uh, these are two guys who started a company by renting out an air mattress in San Francisco years ago. That's that's actually the true story. And last this, coming in at number five, watch out if you're a Tesla owner because, after all, you can lock and unlock your Tesla using an app. Now, here's the problem. A guy in Canada pulled out a smartphone key and he drove off in a white Tesla Model 3. Problem, it was not his Tesla. He accidentally drove off in an identical one that was parked right next to his. Now, here's kind of the weird part. He was able to pick up his kids driving around for 90 minutes with no problem. He didn't realize that this was strange and it wasn't his own Tesla until he's like, hmm, I don't remember my windshield being cracked. Um, Where's my phone charger? Did somebody steal my phone charger? It, it wasn't his car. And that's not the end of the story. The other Tesla owner was able to unlock his Tesla and drive away too. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Now, before you say Tesla backwards, just make sure that everyone's ready. All set? Ooh, I know. All right, coming up, we have some apps to help you get into shape. And Allie, our amazing content queen, is going to be joining us. We're going to talk about some spring cleaning. And let's see, a listener asked me, where's the safest place to store my wife's naked pictures? Well, we've got that coming up, as well as more of your phone calls and more of me, Kim Commander. Hey, listen, I just want to let you know that our newsletters are going through a major revamp and change, and it's going to have a new look, new focus, more meat and less ads. So if you're not getting our newsletters already, make sure that you sign up right now at commando.com slash subscribe. Okay, so imagine you're in this scenario. You're driving in the mountains. It starts snowing. It's cold. And then, oh my gosh, the worst. Your car gets stuck. And it's not stuck in a way that you can get out of. You're far away from 
all human beings, you have no cell phone service. This is a truly a life-threatening situation. Well, this is exactly what happened to Casey Ryan. He was driving up in an Oregon National Park in the Cascades when his car was snowed in. And Casey, I wanted you to come on and tell us your story. Oh, my gosh, how innovative, how smart of you to think about this. But what exactly, where were you going that day? What were you doing? Well, I was heading up in the mountains with my dog and my friend. Uh, I'm a photographer and an artist. Um, that day, we are just uh, kind of making a usual trek up into the mountains. We're always um, either doing some sort of garbage cleanup or pollution control, um, little, you know, volunteer projects in the mountains. I, I had kind of gotten a hunch and I had told my friend, what if somebody is up here? Because these tracks do look fairly fresh. And I was wondering maybe mm -hmm. there could be a chance there's a vehicle stuck up here. And so we both still figured, well, we better chain up or call it. So, but coming around that next corner, sure enough, there's a van buried in looking like it, it slid sideways. Wow. And, um, now, how, now how, how deep was the snow at this point? It ended up being about two feet where her, her vehicle was. She ended up getting out of the vehicle. I kind of assumed maybe it was a vehicle that had been left there, but sure enough, somebody was in it. Um, luckily, she had food and water and a little dog. and <laughs> Everyone was uh, seeming okay, but she had said she'd been there a couple of days and wow. uh, didn't really have a plan. So I think she was really, really hoping somebody would come along. <laughs> and that was you, right? Yep. Me and a buddy. Yep. So I kind of did what I usually do if I'm in that scenario. I've pulled a few people out before. I just said, yeah, I've got a rope and we've got uh, recovery boards and shovels and just give me a minute to turn around and we'll get it squared away for you. And went to turn around and that's when I sunk down into the snow drift and we were able to dig out a couple of oh. times. We pulled out the shovels. No big deal. Let me just get it going. And we, we broke free a few times, but that last turn around, we just sunk in and it was starting to lock up and the weather was starting to get really cold really fast and was it was it getting dark then too it was about uh 30 minutes from getting dark but we had still uh dug for a little while longer until we were both covered in sweat and realized okay uh, we're probably gonna have to come up with another plan and so I asked her, do you have any radio? She happened to have a CB radio. So we scanned that. And then me and my friend wow. scanned through the walkie talkies we had, and we couldn't find any channels or anybody. So I also looked at the mountain. That's what kind of started to spin the wheels on the idea. We're hiking all the time and we run into uh, the tops of mountains that have cell phone service all the time. So then you get the idea. We're going to attach the phone to the drone. Use the paracord just around the, the base where the battery goes and then um, mm -hmm. hung it down about another six inches. And I had never launched from my hand, but I had um, I'd landed in my hand before. So I figured, well, maybe mm -hmm. it's the same thing. I just held it real stable and uh, got it going. And after a minute, I could feel it was it was trying to pull the weight of my hand and, and whatever I was holding. And then I just kind of boosted it up and just floored it towards the sky and it it went way way up there, um, but that's awesome. So, how many feet did it go? Uh, I would say a, a number of a, like a, probably a few hundred feet or more. I, I had to kind of max it out in order to get the signal because as I'm going up, I'm like halfway up the mountain, and I can tell by looking across that sure. the angle isn't right, and the battery's already now at fifty percent just from that one little short flight in the cold. So how long did you um, let it sit up there? Uh, I hovered it for about two or three minutes. That's when I just kind of just took a few pictures, actually, while I was up there. And I was like, OK, well, we need to leave it so it has time to send. Because when you send a message on an iPhone, you really only have a few, like maybe two or three minutes before it says not delivered. So I knew I had to right. get it wrapped up or send the text, get it wrapped up, get it tied up taped up and sent up all within two or three minutes. And so it, it worked when that uh, drone was coming back down the first time, it was, uh, it was really wobbling. You could see the phone was swinging like this cause it's going in front of there um, in front of that light. When you're looking up at it, you can, it's just a teeny little dot in the sky. And that's what kind of, I was like, man, I got some good elevation. I think we might've caught this uh, message out. Sure enough, that first text got sent out. and who, who, who did you address the text to? Who was getting the text? Oh, well, my wife's uh, from Uganda in Africa. She's visiting family and friends uh, this last couple of months. And uh, so I, she's the most uh, amazing person in my life. I always send her the first message of everything. And so 
I sent the text straight to Uganda to my wife, telling her the scenario we're 25 to 30 miles into the mountain. Um, we do have food and water. We do have supplies. Um, there's another vehicle up here that we have found that's stranded as well. So, so th- what happened the next morning? Yeah, the next morning we woke up. Uh, it was 12 degrees. The snow around the truck is now just pure ice. You couldn't even, I pulled out this rock hammer and it was like chipping rock. And I was like, there's no way we're going to chip our way out of this thing. So um, I, as far as I can tell, she says that she's reached out to somebody because she let me know she's not just going to leave us out there. Once I had gotten contact, I knew she would, she would do something, but I was kind of thinking, I'm wondering what it's going to be. Um, so this, so this is really great stuff, really, Casey. That So you were able to get your phone, hook it up to the drone, get the drone to at least send that message to your wife, and then you were able to get help and help other people along the way. Uh, but we're all so glad that you're safe and you told us the story because who knows, Casey, maybe someday somebody's saying, you know what, we're in the snow, we got a phone, we got a drone, now we can be like Casey Ryan and we're going to save everybody's yep. life. Casey, thank you so much for being here with us. It's an incredible story. I uh, really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me on. Stay right where you are. We have more tricks, tips, and secrets coming up on the Kim Commando Today podcast. All right, still to come this hour, we have where's the safest place to store my wife's naked pictures? Yeah, a letter in our listener mail. And also later on, it's a question that I also get so many times. How do I know if my iPhone or Android isn't listening to every single thing that's happening around me and that I sing? And joining us right now on the Kim Commando Show is our amazing content queen, Allie Seligman. And Allie, we're going to talk about... Spring cleaning that doesn't require Clorox, right? I hate this one. <laughs> That's what I think of, right? When I say spring cleaning, is there a task that comes to mind for you? Um, wow. Uh, cleaning out closets. Ooh, you know, that's a good one. You know, I mean, you know, here's the deal. I will do a lot of things around the house. Okay. I mean, I will. I mean, I wash the floors. Wait for the butt. Love, What's coming? <laughs> okay, I, okay. I love to vacuum uh-huh. and, and I'm so obsessed. I have this brand new Dyson Animal Plus <laughs> vacuum and it has a green laser light. Allie. And so when it's vacuuming with that green laser light, you see like a speck of Ooh, an oatmeal nice. right there. Okay. Love that. I feel like so good about that. And it has this vacuum attachment. I know I'm going too much in my vacuum. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, I'm okay with loading the dishes. Okay. Okay. But there's one thing that I hate, and I just hate it, is washing and folding laundry. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a bad just, one. Uh, how about you? Um, my least favorite is cleaning the bathroom. Gross. Uh, yeah. I don't, yeah. That's good. I don't yeah. love loading the dishwasher, um, but I did what I consider like the ultimate spring cleaning thing a couple weeks ago. I scrubbed the grout in my kitchen, like with no. a tooth. I did it. It looks so good. Oh, nice. It took so long. My knees still hurt, but uh, it, it was <laughs> okay. worth it. Right. It was worth it. But now it's like, you can but see, it's like, that's an accomplishment though. Cause you can look back and you're like, yes, I did it. Yeah. I still right. feel like Which, I can get out of chores for the next month because I <laughs> well, did you that. You should be able to. Yeah. So you know, when we want to spring clean our devices, because everybody has a phone, Let's start with the phone. So what do you think is the first thing that folks need to do? I'm going to divide this up. So let's say, okay, you heard us talk about, yeah, I spent all day doing the the grout, right? Takes forever. If you only have a little bit of time, what's a little quick cleanup you can do? I think you should start with your apps. Maybe this means deleting ones you don't use anymore because they're just cluttering things up. If you have an account with that app, make sure you delete it. That is the safe way to do it because otherwise it's just floating out there in the ether. You don't have the app on your phone anymore. Uh, You can also get rid of the apps, at least from the home screen of your phone, that you're trying not to use as much. So if you are that person, like I've been recently saying, you know what, I need to stop scrolling on Instagram so much, get it off (laughs) your home screen, hide the app. Uh, That's a little favor you can do for yourself. A little tip there too, if you need help, just saying, you know what, I get five minutes a day on this app and that's it. You can do that. You can set a time limit. And we actually have steps for that over on commando.com. Now, you know what I did on Instagram? What'd you do? Is I unfollowed everybody. (laughs) How elitist of you. (laughs) So if you go to Instagram, because I thought, you know what? I would just sit there and see what all these people are doing. Okay. I just, 
I so I said, you know, I just decided, like, you know what? I'm just not going to do that anymore. <laughs> so I follow Ian. Great. And I follow an account on Instagram. So just two accounts. Okay. Ian and uh, Baller Busters. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. So, you know, somebody's a baller, you know, like they're all, you know, high and you yeah. know, gluten. Fancy and they're stuff. showing off their life. And so, okay. These guys are the best. They will bust people like, you know, like Grant Cardone comes out and says, oh, you know, you should never buy any real estate. Never. And then, you know, so they show that. And then they'll show like Grant Cardone buying like a $40 million mansion <laughs> in Miami, you know. Or the one that they had this past week was the cover of Forbes magazine. And the, there were four people on the cover. Okay. One of them was a, a Theranos. Oh, the other no. one was the FTX guy, <laughs> uh, the WeWork guy. And then also when Forbes gave uh, the Silicon Valley Bank, like the best banking award of the year, <laughs> you know. So anyway, those are the only two. That All right. Life gold do not end up on Forbes. That's what we're hearing. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Um, all right. If you have more time on your phone, uh, you can go a couple directions here. You could go into your contacts. When is the last time you actually cleaned out your contacts? I know you did that recently, Kim. I have not. Um, I look mm-hmm. through mine and I have people from college, me, you know, it, it, it's old. It's really old. It's a mess. Um, that is something you can do. It's actually not as hard as you think it is. There are some shortcuts, especially if, an, if you have an Android phone and Google, uh, Apple. It's... It's a pain. It's hard. We'll just say it, right? It it's a pain. It's just, it's a royal pain. It's so, it's such a time suck. It is. But like the grout, how rewarding. Because now <laughs> when you scroll through your phone, you're like, oh man, only people that I actually know and want their phone numbers. It feels good. Yeah. It feels good. You know, we could call that the grout test. Oh, I like that. We're keeping <laughs> the that. The grout test. Yeah. All right. The other direction you could go, of course, your photos, if you haven't done that in a while. This is another time suck. I say you do a smart move like Kim does. Do this on your downtime. If you're watching a show, maybe you've got wrangled into a show with, you know, your husband or wife and you don't like the show that much, but you're there for moral support. Uh, Clean out your photos (laughs) while they're watching, Yes, you know, Um, and then sanitize your phone. I know that you're bringing your phone to the bathroom. Your phone is gross. Take off the case. Clean that thing off. Uh, You can just do it with a wipe, really like a you know, sanitizing wipe. Um, yeah, you can buy the the fancy phone wipes and all that, but a good old Clorox wipe will do the job. So after our phones, now we get everything all done there. And we're feeling good. We're feeling power. We're fresh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So how about we talk about the TVs? Ooh. I would, su- I would suggest with spring cleaning first, before we go physical that we say, let's get rid of all the subscription services <laughs> that we've signed up for and we just don't watch them. I mean, you signed up for the Sundance channel oh and you gosh. paid for it for like six months. I mean, uh, never you know, even I watched was, the movie I, that I signed yes, up for it for. Never did. Um, I found on our subscription list this morning um, Hallmark movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, okay, here's a, a something that you need to know about us. I have never watched a Hallmark movie. I have no intention of so. Who else in the household is watching Hallmark mm, movies? Would his name be, starts with a B. Yeah. Would that be Abby? Yes. No, it's Barry. I'm like, I'm like, dude, are you watching like Hallmark movies? Like, uh, and the thing well, about those research. is you don't even think about them. And I think the Sundance Channel was like 15 bucks a month or something. Like, that's not a small amount of money. That's a lot. So these things add up. Yes, you should definitely do that. I would mark that down as a, this takes a little more time task, depending on how you do it. You know, you can do manually, go through your banking app and look at all your charges. Uh, You can sign into all the sites. You can use an app like Rocket Money. Some bank apps actually do it for you. They'll say, hey, here's all your subscriptions. Do you want these? Um, My big advice here is be honest with yourself. Don't do that thing where you say, but I might watch it in a week. You're not going to. You're not going to. No. If you haven't watched it. It's like those jeans that you have in the back of the closet. They don't fit and they're not going to fit. You're not going to (laughs) watch the Sundance channel. You're just not. I'm sorry. So go in, get rid of those. And the thing is, if you want it back, you can sign up again. And I bet you'll get a better deal because they're going to try to get you back. Of course, there is also the dust and the gunk on your TV. Most of us, hopefully every now and again, we dust kind of the, the screen of our TV. Unless you have little kids around that are, you know, sticky fingers touching it. It's It should be pretty clean. You can get screen wipes. Those really are the best way to te- clean a TV. 
stay far away with the paper towels. Those are scratchy. Don't use that. Um, screen wipes work really well. But the dust, that is really where you want to focus. So, of course, the top, the ledge of the TV, uh, run a rag across that and you will be uh, upset with yourself that you don't do that more often. And the back of the TV, that's really where it matters because in all those vents, all those little spots, lots of dust and dirt gets stuck. Uh, you can do it a few ways. You can go in with your vacuum. Uh, that's a pretty mess-free one. You could use if you have one of those high-powered air blowers. Um, I have one instead of buying the cans of compressed air. Those work well. It does make a bit of a mess, so prepare yourself to clean the floor as well, but it does get stuff out of there. Um, but vacuum is nice if you need to, or if you're in a rush, just go with a rag. But really, when's the last time you cleaned your TV? Come on. So so I know, you know, obviously we have to do computers too, but I think those are a lot of step-by-steps that I'm sure we have over at the website where people can go through and know how to like, you know, clean out their desktop and their browser exactly. and their cache and their cookies and things like that. Um, but it is springtime, so it's time for everybody to like get their butt in action, right? Absolutely. And to start cleaning that stuff up uh, because those dust bunnies, I'll tell you, when we moved <laughs> – I, I, I'm telling you, it was disgusting behind the televisions. It really, I'm surprised that they still work. Well, that's why we left them, <laughs> quite frankly. We did. We left them at the house. You can have all the TVs. So, Allie, thanks for joining us as always. And, of course, we're going to have all this over at the website, commando.com. And uh, so proud of everything that you're doing on the website and also all the work that you're doing on the new newsletters. Because, folks, I'm telling you, we have some new newsletters coming. You're just going to dig them. Once again, Allie, thanks for being here. All right, letter from our listener mail. Where's the safest place to store my wife's naked pictures? Ooh, okay. Actually, look this guy up. He's a professional photographer. Over on the website, we have the steps, but it all comes down to encryption. Like with iDrive, you can get a private key encryption. You can also compress and encrypt your images using uh, a service and a a program like 7-Zip. We're going to tell you exactly how to do that. You can also lock the notes on your phones. And so If this is a concern, you have some pics on your phone that you don't want anybody to see, just hit the website and use the phrase uh, naked pictures. And I'm sure this tip is going to pop up. All right. Still to come, we have more of your phone calls as well as a way to see which apps are listening on, on your phone on the Kim Commando Today podcast. Uh, Bruce in Madison, Wisconsin. Glad to have you with us. Hi, Kim. Thanks for taking my call. Betcha. What's going on? Um, recently, I've had to send some documents to my CPA and my financial advisor, and these have been, you know, tax documents and uh, other sensitive documents that had personal information. And they wanted them to be sent as attachments over email, and that kind of bothers me. And I was wonder. I was told by my fan, financial advisor that all you had to do was put the word "secure" in brackets in the uh, subject line of the email, and that would make it secure uh, between me and them. No. Well, no, I kind of that doesn't make sense. Kind of what I felt too, because I've never heard anything like that before. But um, if anything, you know, well, think about this, Charles. I'm going to send an email with the subject "secure." As it goes through all the Internet's highways and byways. Uh-huh. And think of an email going through the Internet, like a postcard going through the U.S. Postal Service. Okay. So let's say that postcard says, here's the secret lottery winning numbers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get then, your point And you're going to send an email that says secure. Okay. And I'm going to be like, okay, dude, what is Charles trying to secure? I don't know. Let's try to open it up. Let's see what he's got in there. Okay. All right. So what you want to do is you want to encrypt those emails, right? Before you send it to your tax accountant or your financial advisor, uh, you can use an encryption program. I may have mentioned it uh, mentioned on the show a few weeks ago called 7-Zip. Um, but just keep in mind that you can also save these documents as PDF files in using Adobe Acrobat um, or any of the other tools uh, is that you can password protect it. Now, uh, if you want to have end-to-end encryption, you can also use a file uh, encryption service like Google Drive. Okay, You could upload it there and they can download it. Dropbox, Microsoft OneDrive, uh, they actually encrypt the files both in transit and when they're just sitting there. And then you could just give a secure link for whoever it is to download the files. And you can also password protect those files if you want. So, so you know, email is a no, no, no. Okay, we don't want to do that, right? 
Okay. <laughs> Tell your tax account. I got a kick out of him saying secure. I like that. That's really awesome. Um, <laughs> your financial advisor is, because I know I deal a lot with my guys over at Morgan Stanley, is that uh-huh. um, I is that they send me a secure email and I have to authenticate myself to go onto their servers where I can download or upload whatever they want me to take a look at. Uh, but if you can't do that, that's again where you want to start using um, Adobe Acrobat, your PDF tool, to actually encrypt that file. Or if you want, you can um, use Dropbox, Google Drive, or Microsoft OneDrive. So does that help you out today? Yeah, the, uh, you mentioned the Z seven zip, and I've I've did yes. a, done some looking at that. Now, if I encrypt it, I can put a pa- I can put a password on that. Uh, whatever files I zip into that and then attach that to an email, send it, and then give the recipient my uh, the password probably through a phone call or something so it's not going with the email. And then they can, on their end, they don't need 7-Zip to unzip it? Uh, no, they're going to need 7-Zip to oh, unencrypt the files. So okay. that's why I think you want, you're better off using PDF, using a PDF file. Or mm-hmm. as I mentioned, Dropbox, Google Drive, or Microsoft OneDrive. Plus, that's going to be a lot easier. You don't, you know, people don't want to install anything else because then what they're going to do it becomes a whole nightmare. Okay, uh-huh. Bruce, you're going to say and he's going to call you up and go, Bruce, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what I'm doing. Right. You know? And you're going to be like, okay, dude, all you have to do is this. And then they're like, okay, you know, I'm only you're not paying me to do this. You know, depending on where your relationship is, so that's why it's just easier just to use the least common denominator, PDFs. That's it. Just. That's it. (laughs) Or uh, Dropbox, Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive. Bruce, thank you so much for your call today. Encryption is so very important when you're sending anything over the internet. I want you to think of it, like I mentioned, like a postcard just going through the U.S. mail. So let me ask you a question. Are your apps listening to every single thing that you say? Well, there's a list that's hidden on your smartphone that will tell you if they really are. Now, here's the scoop. When you install an app, Nobody ever reads the app's terms and conditions, all the legal mumbo-jumbo that you said yes to when you click agree because otherwise you don't get the app, right? But how do you find out which apps are doing this? For iPhone users, simply open settings, go to privacy and security and tap microphone. Now, this will pull up a magical list of all the apps that are using your mic. And from there, you can disable the apps that you don't want picking up any conversation. Now, if you're on an Android, it's kind of the same story. You go into the settings menu, but here you're going to find the apps permission manager, and you're going to disable the microphone for any apps that should not be using it. And finally, before you download an app, just be sure that you read the reviews in the Apple app or Google Play Store, because that's where you may find things out like, oh, this app is really listening. And don't forget, 24-7, if you need more information on anything, just hit our website. That's commando.com. This program is a copyrighted production of West Star Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of West Star Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.